Hey there, welcome to Technability. I'm Berg. Check out technability.com. We are your source for no-nonsense tech. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of great content up right now. We are your source for no-nonsense mobile tech. So again, subscribe to the channel. So we're gonna get started here right off the bat and show you guys a comparison between the Google slash LG Nexus 5 against the Motorola Droid Max. So let's get started here. Uh, without any further ado, we're gonna get started with the Nexus. So you can see the Nexus right off the bat. You have a gorgeous, gorgeous five inch display, 1080p, rendering 445 pixels per inch. It's a true IP, uh, IPS LCD display. You can see in terms of its viewing angles, they're pretty solid. You do get a little bit of a discoloration and fading when you view to certain angles or when you just kind of like put it in certain angles, you can see it gets a little discolored there, but uh, it's nothing too noticeable. Uh, it's a gorgeous display as far as we're concerned. You have the navigation uh, buttons on the bottom, back, home, multitask, which we'll get into. Uh, you have the top, which has the, you have the top, which has the uh, proximity sensor front facing camera and very little bezel as you can see, as well as on the sides and on the bottom. On the bottom, you can see you have the speakers and the USB port as well as the microphone. Right here, you have the SIM card tray plus the power button. Up top, you have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the back, you have the matte finish with the Nexus logo, with the LG logo right down there. You do have the IMEI right here. When you order the phone, you can peel that off. You have the eight megapixel camera with flash and really nothing else. It's a very simple phone. 8.6 millimeters in terms of its thickness. It's a gorgeous device. It, it feels good in the hand. Uh, it's, it has a soft matte finish. It's unibody in the, in the sense that you can't re uh, remove the back plate. Comes in both 16 gigabyte and 32 gigabyte models. Again, 1080p display. Uh, you have a <clears throat> Snapdragon 800 quad core 2.3 gigahertz processor in this with two gigs of RAM. Uh, and, and overall, it's a very fast zippy device, no doubt about that. In terms of just overall speed, this thing is blazing fast. You can see just panning through the screens, it's super fast. And we'll get through some speed tests as we go on. But that's the Nexus in terms of hardware. Now let's go ahead and look at the Motorola Droid Max. Okay, so the Droid Max has a 720p display. Okay, it's uh, 295 pixels per inch. This is a super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen display. Uh, it's about, I believe, 8.5 millimeters in thinness, but the, the, the real kicker with this device is that it's got a 3,500 milliamp battery, which is absolutely huge. All right, you got two gigs of RAM, an S4 Pro processor, as well as a dual core 1.7 gigahertz create Adreno 330, excuse me, Adreno 320 GPU. Okay, so in terms of the Droid Max, uh, you have all the bells and whistles in terms of nice hardware. It's a beautiful build. Again, it also has a matte finish, 10 megapixel rear camera, two megapixel front facing camera. You got the Motorola Droid logo right there with the Motorola M right there, Verizon right on the bottom. It's a Verizon phone. And again, in terms of just screen quality and, and speed, it's also a very zippy device, especially given that it's running 4.2.2, whereas the Nexus is running KitKat 4.4.2, if you've already updated to 4.4.2. And that's where these two are fundamentally different. But one thing I also wanted to mention here about uh, the uh, Droid Max is its computing system, which if I go to settings, I'm gonna show you guys this in settings here. All right, if I could find the settings here. All right. Let's see, it's not alphabetical, or yes, it is alphabetical. Okay, so settings, all right, go all the way down to about phone. You can see right here, it's a system information, Motorola X8 mobile computing system. But obviously both are running different operating systems. Well, it's, they're both Android, but this is 4.4.2, this is 4.2.2. So you got Jelly Bean, you got KitKat, right? Okay, long press that again. All right, you could just kind of play around with the jelly beans here. Over here, you can just move these things around. All right, so we're gonna exit out. All right, so both of them in terms of hardware are fundamentally different. Quad-core Snapdragon 800, Motorola X8 computing system, but you have a dual-core S4 Pro in here. Both have two gigs of RAM, 32 gigabyte internal on this bad boy, 16 and 32 on this one, also comes in white. Also comes in white, so uh, fundamentally different, but they're both very zippy, very fast phones, no doubt about that. You can see just panning through the displays, uh, no lag whatsoever. Um, it's responsive to my touch, immediate to my touch, and we can go ahead and just show you guys the multitasking here. Okay, you can see the multitasking is the same on both, so you can just swipe them away one by one. Same here, swipe them away one by one. Right, let's go ahead and run a few speed tests, Turn uh, open settings here. Okay, the Nexus was slightly a bit faster. Open the Play Store. All right, almost about equal there. Okay, open uh, Chrome. All right, let's just go to a website here. 
And you can see their respective keyboards as well. I will just go to Google here and see which one loads in Gadget faster. Google. Okay, you got Verizon's network, you got T Mobile's network. Okay, pinch zoom, both very fast on both, both very smooth and responsive. Pan around the screen while you're pinch zooming, pan around the screen while you're pinch zooming. If we were to go to Engadget here, okay, it wasn't at the exact same time, but it's going to load the mobile site. You can see all about CES. Okay, and you can access the notification bar as well, which we'll get into. Okay, and you can see how that works with the tabs. All right, you got the various tabs. You can add a tab, just swipe down, swipe them away if you want. Okay, and then just exit out. Again, going back to multitasking, swipe them away. So very similar, right? I mean, Motorola, and this used to be called Blur. Motorola Blur, or I believe it was Blur. I could be wrong about that, but that used to be Motorola's overlay for their uh, Motorola smartphones. So now it's more, it's, it's probably the one overlay that's the closest to stock Android. And that's in every way. I mean, you can see creating folders is the same as stock Android. That's the same here by creating a folder. You just drag an icon into another icon, take a widget and move it around. It's going to adjust the icons for you. And the same can be said here. If you long press or not, if you, excuse me, not if you long press, if you go to settings here, all right, you can see all the settings, which we'll get into as well. But you got a flurry of widgets. You got live wallpapers as well. All right, which uh, are different on KitKat now. The wallpaper system is different. You can see when you long press, you get widgets, wallpaper, and settings. Okay, so if I go to wallpapers, you can see the wallpapers here. All right, you got more live wallpapers here on the uh, on 4.2.2. Over here, you have Sunbeam. Over here, you have Phase Beam. Okay, but they're both the same concept, just a different color. All right, and going back to the notification bars here on both of them. Or you can see the notification systems. Obviously, there's a lot of notifications on this phone, but you can just swipe them away. Very simply, swipe them away. All right, over here, you can also swipe them away. You also have the quick settings panel, all right, which if you just use two fingers here, you can get the quick settings panel. It's the same here. You can also just push it, push that button right there, and you get the quick settings. So they're both the same. Again, the system hasn't changed from KitKat, from Jellybean to KitKat. It stayed the same. Right, you can see up here, you have the toggles with the Droid Max. Over here with the Nexus, you don't. You know, stock Android's not very customizable. Uh, it's not. If you go to settings, if we go to the settings here with the Droid Max, you go to the settings here with the Nexus, and you can see the blacks are deeper on the Droid Max than they are on the Nexus, and that's due to the fact that it's a Super AMOLED versus a TriPS LCD. So the blacks are going to be deeper, but the whites are just slightly a bit more white on the Nexus than they are on the Droid Max. So uh, you can see here, going through the settings, you have different uh, settings here in terms of customizations with the Droid Max. Active notifications, you can see all these active notification settings right here. Active display, manage notification types, more privacy, sleep at night. You also have Droid Zap, okay, which is uh, basically you could turn that on. You could lock things, it says lock things I share, when to share cash, uh, share the Droid Zap app, private policy. You have touchless controls, which is basically voice controls. You have a bunch of features there as well. All right, and obviously you have all the other uh, regular settings such as sound, display, storage, etc. You have security and screen lock, which again you also have in terms of um, lock screen here with stock Android. Okay, you have lock screen options if you were to go to uh, security. Okay, you have Motorola device ID, and you also have developer options. Of course, you also have developer options here on stock Android. So they're similar, but Motorola has added a few little tidbits or their own touches to their settings, which have added a, a bit of a customization. And it takes advantage of their X8 system, which which utilizes the you know the voice control system that they have on this on this phone, which they also have on the Moto X. If you've utilized the Moto X, it also has that similar system. Uh, now going into some third-party apps like Facebook, both run very smooth, very fluid, both are very responsive to the touch. Um, you can see it's just a little stutters a little bit here on the Motorola uh, Droid Max, but nothing too um, obvious or nothing too uh, noticeable. But it's a little bit smoother on the Nexus, again, because it is running on the quad-core Snapdragon 800, so it's slightly a bit faster. Going into the app drawers, you can see they're the same or very similar, uh, except for the fact that now you no longer have the uh, widgets uh, tab right here up top on stock KitKat, whereas with the 4.2.2, uh, obviously, you, also, you still have the widgets tab. So you can see the widgets are the same on both. Going back to the widgets now. You can see they're very similar on both, okay, in terms of being the same. Uh, Motorola has added a few of their own things, but nothing too dramatic. So they're both similar in that regard as well. Uh, going into Hangouts, obviously now they've integrated Hangouts here with, um, what did I just delete? I don't know what I just deleted. You can see now with Hangouts, okay, you can see how this works. All right, so let's just open a Hangout here. All right, so you can see both of them are very similar, similar keyboards, right? You have a different key sound here now, obviously with KitKat than you do with Jellybean. Okay. 
Okay, going back to the cameras, now we're going to look at the camera on both devices. I'm going to move the camera around here. Okay, actually, you know what, let's point it that way for once, which is my showcase. All right, we have the front-facing camera here on the Nexus. All right, 10 megapixel versus 8 megapixel. All right, the quality on both is really good. You can see, just tap it, takes a picture. Okay. So once again, tap, take a picture over here. Obviously, with the Nexus, you just take a picture by clicking that. Obviously, you have zoom and all that good stuff as well. Oops. You can take pictures by just pushing the uh, volume rocker. Okay, over here, you just tap on it, takes a picture. You also have video, you also have front-facing camera. I like the ability to just be able to access the front-facing camera by pushing a button. Here you have the long press, which gets a bit tedious sometimes, but... Okay. Alright, let's switch back here. Okay. Your video, video recording. Okay. So, Google Now, Google Now, go home on both, show you guys the gallery here on both. So the cameras are similar, but obviously you have a 10 megapixel on one, you have an 8 megapixel on the other. So is it much of a difference? Uh, I don't know, let's look at the picture quality right now and see. Okay, we didn't take the greatest photos, but we took enough to judge, I would presume. Okay, you can see both photos here. Okay, you got a little bit more color clarity on the uh, Nexus, but, or excuse me, on the, the Max, of course, because you, got, you do have a Super AMOLED display, but uh, it just renders, it renders the image color a little bit better. You can see the blacks here on the uh, background image poster that I have right there. You can see it's a little bit faded here on the Nexus, a little bit more open and uh, popping out here on the Droid Max. Okay, and again, you can just swipe down and delete the photos. Uh, you can also share the photos, they're the exact same or almost very similar. Uh, third party apps sync in here so you could share via third party app through their sharing options. Uh, you have the ability to delete as well as edit. Okay, so you have the editing options here. See trim details. All right, so if you click right here, you have the ability to edit via any third party app. Oh, this is a video. All right, here we go. You have filters right here as well. Okay, so you can see the editing filters and editing options are the same. For the most part, they're the same. They've stayed similar. Then you just go back here, go back, hold down, swipe them up, swipe them up, and get rid of them. Okay. And just go home, go home. All right, so the cameras on both are pretty solid. Uh, I know that wasn't the most detailed test, but they're very solid in terms of both of their overall um, picture quality for being a smartphone especially. Uh, they're, they're really solid in their, in their respective ways. Uh, both, both do well in terms of rendering photos on the actual phone, but I do think because you have a Super AMOLED here on the Droid Max, the colors do look a little bit better on the Droid Max. Right, let's go ahead and run a Quadrant benchmark here. Okay. Benchmark, you can see it's a little bit faster on the Nexus. Let's click yes. Yes. Okay, you got 8095 on the Droid Max and you have 8611 on the Nexus. Now, uh, really, Quadrant depends on, uh, I mean, in terms of the scores on Quadrant, really depends on whether or not you put a lot of value or stock into it. I've uh, ran Quadrant on lesser hardware and gotten scores of up to 20,000. So, really, uh, 8611, 8095, I don't know if that necessarily represents these phones, but when you have a, a quad core Snapdragon 800 in the Nexus, uh, you would expect a higher score. But in any case, that's Quadrant. And I just want to show you guys the hardware again here in comparison to one another because they're very similar in terms of their size, 8.6, 8.5 millimeters. Droid Max is a little bit longer, but the build are, is, is fairly similar. They both have that matte finish on the back. You can see them just kind of put together, okay? All right, let's go ahead and run an N22 benchmark as well. 
So we're going to run in 2-2 two -two here. This is going to take a while, so I'm just going to cut to the end of the score. So I'll see you guys in about 5 seconds. Alright, here are the scores right here. We have a 21. 353 for the Motorola Droid Max, and we got a 2123 for the Nexus 5. So again, fairly lower scores, especially when you compare it to the Note 3. 3 gigs of RAM I know on the Note 3, but uh, the Note 3 gets scores of about 36,000. So really uh, depends on how you want to compute these scores and whether you want to actually put um, credibility into them. Now again, what the Droid Max is known for is their uh, touchless control system that they have. Uh, you could see all these features that they have. They got control your phone using a hand-free launch phrase followed by a command, uh, auto speaker phone, call while locked, train lo a launch phrase, confirm before calling. You got a lot of great features there that they've added with this system. And again, going back to the notification, you can see the toggles and all that. You can just push the X to X them away. With KitKat, it's a little bit more simplistic, but you do have this. Okay, Google. Navigate to Pasadena, California. Navigating to California. Navigating Pasadena. to Pasadena. What is 6 times 6 minus 3 times 6 minus 2 plus 9 to the third power? 9 to the third is 729. 69. Okay. Abandon is the 16th. Both of them didn't necessarily get that. Maybe I was a little bit too fast. How many nickels are in one dollar? 20 nickels is one guess based on results below. 20 nickels below. is one guess based on results below. Who is the 16th president of the United States? We already know that's Abraham Lincoln. According to Wikipedia, Abraham Lincoln was the 16th President of the United Abraham States, Lincoln was serving the 16th from March 1861 until it all right, you can see how that works. You also got the Google Now tab now on the left-hand side of KitKat. So you could basically put your cards right there and get them all uh, nicely organized right there on the left-hand side. Okay, and again, going back to the screen, I have to mention this. The screen on this Droid Max is beautiful. You're talking about a Super AMOLED. Even though it's only 720p, the colors are just so nice. It pops out at you. When you really, when you put an LCD display next to it, uh, it really showcases how bright and vibrant it is. Even though a lot of people will say that LCD displays look a little bit more realistic uh, than your Super AMOLED counterpart, I would argue that there's certain cases, such as the Droid Max, where I think the Droid Max's display is just absolutely gorgeous. All right, looking at the dialers on both, you can see. See the dialers on both? Okay, so they've changed it a bit on KitKat, but not too much, okay? Um, now, in terms of email integration, obviously you get Gmail integration, you got all sorts of different uh, email apps in the Play Store, but you also get their email integration, uh, email app, which you can utilize. So uh, that's one of the features that comes with uh, stock Android or one of the apps that comes with stock Android, as well as Keep and, and uh, Play Games and Maps and of course Google Settings and all that good stuff as well. So not much bloatware on this either. I mean, you do get these Verizon apps, uh, which you're gonna deal with. You know, if you root the phone, which the Droid Max does have solid development, uh, you can obviously get rid of the bloatware. So if you're, you're into development, go ahead and look into rooting the phone to get rid of the bloatware. All right, you got other various apps that are very similar to one another, such as Clock, and the weather, you know, the stock weather app, you can see they're similar. KitKat's changed a little bit. You have a few different features now, but uh, in the, for the most part, they're the same. Um, other things such as a speed tests in terms of web speed tests, it depends on the network. Uh, both are very fast. Uh, again, both have pretty solid cameras. The gallery apps are similar as well, the sharing. So the, uh, Motorola has gone more stock than they have, than say Samsung with TouchWiz or HTC with Sense. Uh, and that's something that they've put into this Motorola uh, system that they have integrated here with their software with stock Android. And really it's, it's a good package. I mean, I'm a fan of what Motorola has done, but I'm also of, of course a big fan of stock Android, no less the Nexus, which is one of my favorite phones. To this day, I've, I've bought every single Nexus upon its release. All right, going into contacts, you can see the contacts here are similar, but also the color schemes are a little bit different. You have that, obviously, jelly bean light blue theme. Over here, you have the white theme with the light blue indicator with the navigation bar right there on the right-hand side. Uh, you have the settings right down here. Of course, you also have the navigation buttons below. Okay, so contacts. Now, in terms of other third-party apps, such as Maps and whatnot, let's just go ahead and run a few speed tests here, see which one opens and closes apps faster. All right, so we're gonna start with Maps. Okay, so I think that was about equal, maybe the Nexus by literally a hair. All right, let's do Facebook. Okay, so again, the Nexus by a hair. Okay, 
by a hair, it's cameras. Okay. Home. Tabs. Okay. Swipe them away. Go home. Alright, let's actually open a calculator on both. Alright. Got a third party app here. Let's just open two separate third party apps here. And we can do uh, NFL Mobile and then Blitz. Okay, so this this is download. So I don't know if we can download that, but oh, you can see the Play Store obviously is the same. Okay, exit out. Okay, exit out. Um, moving an icon around very quick. See that? Super quick. Put an icon around super quick. Going to the lock screens real quick. Let's look at the lock screens. Alright, you got lock screen widgets. Uh, you got the camera, access to the notification bar, of course. Okay, camera. And the lock passcode here. Over here, you just unlock it. You can set a passcode if you'd like. Let's go ahead and look at some video quality. Your calendar. What you used to look forward in time. Let's hear some quality here. On the next is first. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So what we have here is a great comparison. One that I've been waiting to do for quite a while. Or at least since the next. So now the question remains, which one is better? Hey, you know what? That's a question I'll leave up to you guys. I like both. Both have their positives. Both have their uh, benefits. Both are really good phones. Both are fast. Both feel good. The Nexus feels a lot lighter than the Droid Max, but you do have a 3,500 milliamp battery on the, in this thing, so battery life is absolutely insane. Uh, in terms of speed and overall fluidity, both are very smooth. Both are fast. We have no complaints in terms of their speed. You can see that just panning through screens again. Uh, just showing you guys just how fast these two really are. Uh, they're blazing fast. Uh, we like them. We like what they both represent, what Motorola has done with this whole Droid uh, Max and, and all these Droid phones that they've released, the next generation that they recently released, uh, are really good solid handsets. So uh, if, you're, if you're with Verizon, you may want to look at the Droid Max as, as your next smartphone. If you're GSM, of course, 349 for the Nexus, 16 gigabyte, 390 with shipping and tax if you're in the US. An absolute steal. Uh, both phones are worth it. So again, if you're in the market, both of these phones should be phones that you should definitely put on your radar. All right, I am Barrage. You have just watched Technability. This is a truly in-depth comparison of the Motorola Droid Max and the Google slash LG Nexus 5. Don't forget to check out technability.com and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are your source for no-nonsense tech. So thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.